Hello, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Today, I really felt the need to talk about parallel processing. Now, we're actually going to talk, ultimately talk about parallel processing in JavaScript. That's the end goal of this video. It's going to be really quick. I wanted to compare um, how you would do that and rel relative to doing it in JavaScript versus doing it in, say, other languages. So what we have here is a sample block of code uh, that demonstrates how you would write parallel coding in C Sharp. Now, C Sharp has had uh, what's called the TPL, or otherwise known as the Task Paralleling Library, for quite some time. Uh, it came out in version 3.5, and it's extremely useful. You can literally, as you see here, I've written a simple uh, for each statement syntax that just says, hey, you know, I want to go through an item that is enumerable, and I want to do some operations. And, you know, if, if you can imagine going through this for each um, if you had a lot of values inside of source, could take some time, especially if these operations, let's say each operation itself took 100 milliseconds, but, oh, I don't know, you had, uh, you know, a thousand items in, 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 the, uh, in the enumerable. Well, there's an interesting solution to that because you can actually, with .NET slash TPL slash C Sharp, very easily just write a parallel version of that, and it just works. And in fact, there's even another version of this that actually works is you can actually go source dot as parallel. Uh, and now you have a parallel enumerable. And from there, you can do things like, oh, uh, I don't know, let's say where, uh, sorry, capitals, uh, uh, or any other, you know, operation that you wanted to do. And it will actually create a parallel um, state machine to properly uh, manage the, all the different threads and tasks in order to get that done. So it's really cool because if there's any time that you actually really want performance in a, an environment where you're doing multiple threaded, this just makes it so much easier than say like a decade ago. A decade ago, you didn't have tasks or promises or anything. You basically had to spin up your own thread. You had to manage it. You had to use thread pools. All these things that you know are kind of mind-bending concepts for most people. And it was a mind-bending concept for me originally. So again, this is how it's done uh, today in you know C Sharp world. And you know as you can see here, it's not that dramatically uh, that big of a deal to do. But now when we go and let's let's move on and let's see how you would do this in JavaScript or in this case I'm actually going to start by um, you know using TypeScript uh, because I've I've built out this in TypeScript but ultimately working in JavaScript. Okay, so what you see here is I'm showing you this test that I set up in my code that will basically demonstrate uh, parallel processing and effectively prove it to make sure that it works. So. What you see here is um, now let's start. Let's talk about how is parallel processing done in JavaScript. Well, what you have uh, in a browser is a an object that exists now for modern browsers. It's called a web worker, or the actual class name is a worker. Now these workers are special. They're essentially special connection objects that allow you to talk to another thread. Um, it's very interesting how JavaScript implements this. It's not the same in any way, shape, or form as how other languages do it. It's the best way to, to describe how web workers work is it's almost like you're initializing your own special web service. So the way that web workers work, or at least their interface, is once you've instantiated one, you can effectively send messages to it. And then the worker can respond as if it's like a web service and then reply back and then you have to listen for a message coming back from it. Or you have to listen for an error that occurs uh, when, it, uh, when it reports an error. And then you can also terminate the worker just like you would terminate a thread. So this is the basic interface of how they work. And it's actually really simple and cool. So the way you have to think about workers is as if they are like a, a, a web service inside your browser, right? Well, why would you do that? Why, why does that make any sense at all? Well, the reason why it makes sense is because the foreground thread that's running in your browser is typically very highly taxed. It's constantly running, it's constantly doing things, it's constantly using up processes, and it just doesn't perform as well as a background thread. So if you wanted to, if you had something that was 
I don't know, let's say, for example, you wanted to crunch bitcoins in someone's browser, which this is actually done. You can look it up. There are websites that you can do this. Uh, we'll actually spin up a worker thread and crunch uh, numbers or do processes or even effectively manage uh, communication between another server in a background thread. That way, allowing the foreground thread to not be interrupted or taxed. This is actually something that if you look into Angular 2, that they're heavily looking into how to leverage uh, web workers. And I apologize if it's not the fact that they are probably just, just using web workers all the time. Um, I did see this in one of their talks. So now that you understand the basics of how workers work, uh, you know, again, it's just the messaging back and forth with, for, between a effectively a virtual web service. You effectively need to write your own web service, and then you send more messages back and forth from it, and you can do um, processing that way. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is what I've kind of set up as effectively a promise structure that will handle the messaging and completion of a task within a worker. It's a way of simplifying things down. Now, the interact method is simply just setting up the messaging. You can kind of see here. It just basically says, hey, um, I, you send me a worker. Uh, I'm going to set up the what, what message handling do you want me to do? What's the on air? And then I need to trigger a message uh, to start the whole process. So that's what this basically does. It's just setting up this happy little promise structure that resolves or rejects based upon the response that the worker does. So what we have here is a TypeScript ported version of what the majority of what was inside of Parallel.js. Parallel.js has been around for a while. It's a great little script that works great in JavaScript. If you just want to use JavaScript, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. It's an NPM, just NPM install Parallel. It's great. Uh, it basically abstracts out all the um, complexities of instantiating a web worker and, and, and sending off these messages or these tasks uh, and allowing you to do things like map and reduce, et cetera. So uh, from the code that they have, I've kind of ported that over and took the majority of the guts and kind of reconfigured it for what I need it for. Uh, and that is a little bit simpler at the moment. I'm working towards getting it to uh, a very similar to how the TPL works in C Sharp. That's my goal. But in the meanwhile, this is very cool stuff. So basically, you know, without going too di deep dive into all this code, uh, it, it really does a great job of managing and sending off these messages as you might expect uh, and getting a response back. So here we are back looking at the test and some key things to understand that are different with say C Sharp versus JavaScript is that anything you send over to the web worker needs to be pretty much self-contained. So um, in this particular case, especially how Parallel.js implements it, you can't do any weird magic, uh, any weird scoping magic where like for example, if I was to take this constant out and put it up here, this wouldn't work because when you send the test function across, it doesn't have any idea what max is. So you have to be kind of careful. It's not like where in uh, the TPL or using parallel in C Sharp, it already, it's not really sending a serialized version across. It's actually knows scope and context and is doing some, manage, some level of synchronization going on. So you, I wanted to set up this basic function. All it does is, I think, is it 10 million? Yeah, so it does 10 million iterations basically from the beginning of this number and sums them all together. So that, you know, you know that's going to take somewhere around a quarter of a second to do that, uh, or should take around a quarter of a second per iteration. And I want to do that four times. So we're going to actually start by doing it synchronously and getting a result. So the first part of this is I actually need to do this synchronously and measure the amount of time it takes to process uh, this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it four times. Uh, each time this number goes up, I'm going to pass that parameter into test, and test is going to come back and give me the result, and I'm going to add that result to this result. That way I have a baseline to guarantee that my parallel processing actually worked. And so here is the parallel code. Now you can see here I'm, at, I'm adding a stopwatch to time uh, how long it takes and you know when this is all done I actually log how long it took right so what I do and again this is a uh, effectively an alpha slash beta version of this 
code that I've written that allows me to use standard promise structures to spin off one, two, three, four um, of these, effectively these workers or these threads to run this function called test and pass it a number. And the final result is that depending on the size of the calculation, right? So you have to consider JavaScript and a single thread is pretty fast. Doing a simple loop with mathematical addition is extremely fast. Um, and you basically have to use a very large number to get it to even slow down at all. So in this case, 10 million is what it was required to effectively add up all these numbers within this for loop inside this function. Uh, and it just blazes through it, at least in a sense within Node. It, it will be a little bit slower probably in a browser, but I'm running this test inside of Node.js. So the actual results of this turn out to be around, you know, anywhere between one second and one and a half seconds. Uh, this process takes if I just run it synchronously. So doing this function four times takes just about a second. So this is where it gets really interesting. The total amount of time it took to compute the, so this is where it gets interesting. The total amount of time that it took to actually compute that test function up above was half a second when you distributed it out to multiple threads. Now in this environment, that could be for a bunch of reasons. Uh, it, you're wondering, well, why isn't it like four times as fast instead of just like about half as fast. Well, there's a lot of overhead when you're trying to schedule multiple threads or multiple workers. You have to start up that thread, you have to process the setup part of the code. So there's some extra overhead there for sure that has to happen. But still, it took half the amount of time, which is for people who are looking for that type of performance, this might be the answer. So yeah, here we are. Parallel processing in JavaScript. If you want to check out the code, I've got it up in GitHub. I'll leave links in the description. Uh, if you just want to do this in JavaScript and don't care about TypeScript, uh, Parallel.js is probably the way to go. Again, like I said earlier, you can npm install Parallel. Uh, it works great. It's very interesting stuff. You won't get the cool promise structures that I've built in because that's the key is trying to be able to um, leverage uh, kind of a map produce structure within promises and not have to rely on how parallel JS does it. There's a, you can just use standard promises to do it here. So again, I hope that was enlightening. I really felt like I needed to do this video. Please give me a like if you liked it. Uh, comment for sure. If you, there was something you didn't like about the video, if you have any criticism, please do. Um, and we'll see you next time.